Hello everyone, this is Cisco from Versailles Music, and in this week's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I process my bass lines in Ableton using audio effects. Without any further ado, let's jump in. First things first, I already have this one bar loop bass line here in D minor. I am using a plugin called Serum. I'm actually just using just a regular preset here in Serum. It's called BAD Bass. It sounds a little bit like this. So something like that is very generic, very simple, short and sweet to the point. But the way I'm going to be processing my uh, bass line today, we're going to make it sound more unison and thicker. So that way it just sounds cleaner uh, in your mix um, and it's not bouncing around everywhere uh, volume wise. So first things first, I'm going to add a compressor here. This is just, you know, dog compressor from Ableton. All right. So uh, now what a compressor does is that it makes uh, everything sound more unison together and it takes out a lot of the harsher frequencies that you don't want higher you know, out. It's also a great way to use it as a limiter as well. It brings out lower frequencies in the mix uh, high, higher and it just makes things uh, sound crispy. And then since we're going to be using this on the bass line, it's going to make it sound you know, nice and thick and it's going to make it sound really, really good. So first things first, we're going to leave the ratio to two to one. You don't want to like cut it too much off of it. Then I'm going to be focusing on the attack. So with the attack, I'm going to bring down the attack to the fastest attack. Because what you want is you want the compressor to immediately start attacking your baseline and start making it sound more unison. And then, you know, after that, then it just makes everything better. Uh, next, we're going to be focusing on the release. Um, I normally tend to go for 200 milliseconds. That way it gives the compressor enough time for it to breathe and, you know, get ready for the next no. And so that way it starts attacking right away. Normally, like, eh, 160 to about 200 milliseconds would be fine. Go ahead, but we'll leave it to 5. And then after that, I'm going to start bringing down the threshold. You want your compressor to just bite maybe attack, have it reduce uh, two to three uh, dBs of gain reduction. So that way any like higher notes, as you can see here, if we look at uh, one bar loop, uh, we have one that's D, and then you have another note that is in, that's an F. The lower notes are gonna sound low, and then you have the higher ones that are gonna be bringing more volume into it. As you can see, like the lower ones, you know, nice and present, but then when you start playing these higher notes, um, the volume starts to fluctuate. And that's something that you don't really want. You want it to keep it unison. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing down the threshold. So I'm going to leave that like around negative uh, 27 dBs threshold. I'm going to go ahead and for the knee, I'm going to keep it. Uh, We'll go to like 11. We're going to have the look ahead at 10 milliseconds so that way it gives the compressor enough time to know, hey, this is going to be the next note and this is what you're know you going to need to do. And as you can see right here, you know, the gain reduction, uh, it, it, it is very high. Uh, it's like around 4 to 5 dBs around so. But it keeps everything unison. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tackle another compressor. With my second compressor, I'm going to utilize it to catch any, anything that wasn't caught with the first compressor. Uh, and, so, and so for your second compressor, you definitely want to have like the same settings. Have the attack of one, of the fastest attack, and then have release of 200 milliseconds as well. But for the threshold, you want to have that just a little ever slightly so... Just for it to, like, to bite. So you want to go ahead and have it just bite. Bring up the knee to 11 dBs and then have a look at him. And if we look here, so I have a baseline, everything is like unison. Um, so already as it is, it's just making everything just, you know, nice and juicy and nice and thick with three C's. Um, and making sure that it's just like everything is there. Next thing, what I like to do to add a little bit of flair is we're going to add a saturator. Saturators are good. It's a good plugin to use to add 
a little bit of harmonics to whatever you know whatever element that you're adding to uh, for bass lines adding a saturator is actually very nice because it just gives a little bit much more harmonics it doesn't doesn't just keep it like dull and, and boring it adds a little bit of flair to it and that's what you want out of your, your bass line you know especially if you're making house and tech house you want it to have a little bit of flair and a little bit of flavor uh, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use a dock plugin here from Ableton we're gonna use this one right here and what this is going to do is it's going to make it sound just a little bit much more harmonic. So as you can see already, it's just adding a little bit of gritness to it, and it sounds very, very nice. I'm going to actually bring up the threshold. Oh, that much better, much better. And again, you know, just using a, a regular stock plugin from Ableton. And then after that, after the saturator, I'm gonna go ahead and add EQ8. And then we're just gonna go with a regular, just again, stock plugin here from Ableton. Um, now, with my uh, EQ, what I want, what I'm aiming towards is just the, the grittiness and just like everything of, of the baseline. Just like, what you wanna do is you wanna eliminate any higher frequencies you don't want and you don't need because with the baseline, you don't need a lot of high frequency. This isn't a lead, this isn't a pad, it's just a regular baseline. And so what I like to do, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one, get rid of this one, and get rid of that one as well. And so what I'm gonna do for this right here, three, I'm gonna go ahead and do a high pass. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set it to about 250 hertz. Your baseline normally tends to reside within 60 hertz and 200. That's where the meat and bones are. I mean, yeah, the meat and potatoes are uh, when it comes to your baseline. And if we were to play here, you can see like right here automatically. So as you can see right here, you know, this is pretty much like, you know, bread and butter right here of your, of your baseline. Everything else that, you know, past 250, you can typically don't need um, because if you tend to keep those frequencies above 250 hertz, um, it just becomes, it adds to the muddiness of the track. And that's not what you want heading down, you know, the road, you know, in your mix down. You want it to have like a nice clean mix. And by eliminating all these frequencies in your bass, it's going to eliminate a lot of like headaches down the road. And then of course, for my First band, I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate any you know, 35, you know, 35 hertz. Typically, you don't hear any anywhere from below 35 hertz. 35 hertz and below, you, you will not hear, uh, feel, it. especially if you know, if you go to like a club, um, it's it's not gonna be there. It'd be more like a feeling, but you won't hear it. But you want what you want to do is you want to take that off and you want to eliminate that. And have it right here. And so it's about 200. We'll leave it at 240. That's a pretty good one. And for your Q curve, what you wanted to do, um, you don't want to go like all extremely like crazy with it. You want to just keep it very, you know, subtle, very simple. So with a bass line, that's normally that's always going to be mono. Um, you know, once when you master it and what have you, then it gets converted to stereo. But um, you, bass lines are always going to be mono. Uh, along with your kick. And so what I like to use to make sure that my bass lines are still mono is I like to use Ozone Imager. And Ozone Imager is a really good, you know, free plugin that you can grab um, that lets you show where your, you know, where your elements stand. Um, you know, if you want to go wide, it'll show you if it's wide or if you think like your element is, you know, if your lead or your bass is too wide or too, you know, mono, it, it can show you that. So let's go ahead and Give that a quick listen, and as you can see right here, it's already yeah, it is mono, so that's perfect. Um, some people tend to kind of like make it with, you know, add width to it, make it much more wide. Uh, but to me, I just, I'm just gonna keep it at you know just mono, so, so that's good. You can add a little bit more flair with your bass lines by going with like a different preset as well, or just a different like bass sound design essentially. So like right here, I'm using this one from uh, Serum, but you can essentially use anything. There's this one. Mm really like. As you can see, that one sounds very nice. More sign. But me, I just like keeping it simple. And so, of course, we're going to go ahead and add in a kick drum here real quick. Regular kick.
That way, by the time you're done with your baseline, processing your baseline, you have that kick uh, that you'll bring in. And of course, it's going to be much more unison. It's going to make it sound much more. So that's pretty much how I uh, process uh, my baseline, actually, uh, using you know stock plugins from Ableton. Uh, it makes it sound a lot better, um, a lot more thicker, too, as well, which is what you want. When you start adding in those kick drums, of course, uh, it just, you know, you have the base of the kick, and then on top of that, you add in that nice, thick baseline. Yeah, that will conclude this week's tutorial. Let us know in the comment section if you found this video informative. Definitely like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week, okay?